I've always said that a team is like an orchestra. Orchestras, in order for them to have success, what you have to do is get each and every one of those instruments to give up their identity for one common goal. When we first heard there'd be a World Cup of Hockey, this is what we dreamed of. Orchestras made up of violinists, you know, skilled players. Scores! Scores! Drummers who were physical players. Up, here they go. It's like a, like a big bear. Trumpet players who might be halfway between. When their 30 seconds are up, they knew to allow the next person to do what he has to do. What a powerful team this is. The orchestra that we had gave ourselves the best opportunity to win. Expectation is sky high for the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. I was part of something incredible. The best team in the world was Canada. You had Canada in Canada. The Maple Leaf trumps everything. With the possibility of losing to Team USA. Canada's national pride is at stake. We have to win. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting for every inch. It was just mayhem. It's chaos. Were there any rules at all? We have a chance to knock the king off the crown. Orchestra is a bunch of people who are willing to sacrifice. That's the only way that that music is going to be good. In 1996, the best orchestras in the hockey world gathered for a new tournament. From the Olympics, to the Summit Series, to the Canada Cup, came this latest incarnation of international competition. It was called the World Cup of Hockey. The superpowers of the sport are set to hit the ice. And it featured the greatest players from around the globe. A who's who of NHL talent representing eight countries. But make no mistake, one orchestra clearly played above the rest. Star! Team Canada! Team Canada! Team Canada! Canada had the upper hand just in terms of reputation and experience. No one was going to beat them. It's just frightening, the talent. The roster Canada put on the ice for this 1996 showcase was perhaps the greatest ensemble ever assembled. Canada had the greatest number of musicians to pull from. They had a roster that limited them to 26. Ten of them are now in the Hockey Hall of Fame. We had 50 goal scorers that were on the fourth line. I remember walking into the dressing room and seeing, you know, the names, the names. <laughs> I mean, our best, Canada's best in there, uh, and just kind of being taken aback. I mean, just go down the middle. So you have Gretzky, the greatest player in history, Mark Messier, Steve Eiserman, Eric Lindros, Paul Coffey on the back end, Scott Stevens on the back end, legendary Hall of Fame players. There was definitely awe. Every guy had a Hall of Fame name and unbelievable numbers, and uh, your eyes are big and they're so good. Part of you didn't know how you're gonna compete. In the decades prior to the 96 World Cup, rarely could anyone compete with Canada. Their national team had captured six Olympic gold medals and 20 world championships. They had won four of five Canada Cups, the only tournament prior to 1996 that featured NHL players. What a marvelous moment in Canada's hockey history. They were Mozart and Bach and Beethoven all rolled into one. The Canadian people thought it was their right to, to win the tournament and that all they had to do was show up and they automatically beat whoever it was who came down the pike. We don't play for silver and we don't play for bronze. We're expected to win. And up second, it's like a depression over here. Somebody died or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was expected. Canada is uh, the huge Goliath that has a club about nine feet long and the ability to wheel it. Two Slovakian players are down. The only team that had a sniff was uh, the Russians, but they were never able to meet the physical demands of 
the Canadian team. Tough. Scary. Physical. In your face, that was kind of Canadian hockey. A lot of the other teams, they didn't have that little edge that I think the Canadian teams have. Primo fronts Malakoff right into the boards. And Goliath wasn't content manhandling the Russians. Throughout the 70s and 80s, beating up Team USA was almost a rite of passage. Typically, Canada would start leveling the physical hitting. Randy Wood goes at it with Lindros. The U.S. would either back off or respond. Charging Shanahan into the goalie and rip the react. Take penalties. Canada would score on the power play. Four on one break. Shoot, he's got End of the night. They'd just push you away, right? And then they'd just, they'd win. Gretz would get three goals, two assists. Lemieux would get four goals and one assist. And all of a sudden it's 8-1. And it's like, didn't think we played that bad. Well, yeah, no, you did. They go! Mario Lemieux has the So here's the sad history. In Canada Cups, the U.S. was 0-7-1 against Canada. And they had not won at the World Championships against Canada in 20 years. They had had it handed to them over and over again. We were second-class citizens. By the time the 1996 World Cup rolled around, the United States was an afterthought in international hockey. In the previous 35 years, Team USA had just one title on their resume. It was called the Miracle for a reason. The United States had never won anything outside of the Olympic Games in 1980. It was always that, that hope again that, that the U.S. would pull together and, and win another one. Americans didn't understand, watching, that this was not something that was going to happen again and again and again. It was like, well, the 80 team won, why can't you guys win? Well, because the natural order of things is the Canadians win, and, you know, we all fight for the other medals. When you're on the losing side more than the winning side, you develop a hatred. I don't know if the Canadian guys felt that way about us. No. No, not at all. I wouldn't dig that deep. You don't have a rivalry in us. Both teams are good. U.S., um, we, we did feel like we needed to earn respect. Did you guys know that you really held the upper hand against the U.S.? You know, I don't know what to, how, how I should answer this. Obviously, you're American. <laughs> so <laughs> They don't look at... You know, the lowly Americans, they don't think you're any good. The U.S. had to tell them, we're not your little brothers anymore. We're not taking this stuff. You know, we're not going to just meekly lose to you and then say it was just a privilege to play against you anymore. Five years before the inaugural World Cup of Hockey, Team USA tried to send that message. Tonight, North meets South, game one of the Labatt Canada Cup Final. The result of the 1991 contest was as predictable as ever. Canada jumped out to an early lead and held on to win the tournament. Midway through yet another painful loss, the anger began to boil over and the Americans took out their frustrations on Canada's most iconic figure. Gretzky chasing it in the United States zone against Chelios. Baby, did he get nailed? Gary Souter descended from 80 greatness. He had no interest in just accepting the fact that Wayne Gretzky was, was a god on the ice. You're playing hockey. He crushed a, a real cheap shot head first into the boards. Yeah, that was, uh, that brought on a bit of a firestorm. <laughs> and it started a lot of the bad blood. Gretzky's hurting. He got lumped together in the ice. He is hurting. This was challenge. This was not backing off and showing all the respect. Canada felt was normal. And I think that could have been the biggest problem. They respected him so much. You know, oh my God, there's Wayne Gretzky. Oh my God, there's Mark Messier. Instead of going, okay, we gotta play against these guys, right? You know that things are going to heat up when Gretzky gets hit, gets knocked out of the game. We've shown respect for a long time. So here's one occasion when we're not. Maybe they're gonna be more. And in 1996, there were more. The 1996 U.S. World Cup team was handpicked by highly respected GM Lou Lamarillo. He assembled a group of players that he was sure could withstand Team Canada's physical brand of hockey. 
He wanted more drummers. You have to despise your opponents a little. You have to be mean. We were not going to be intimidated. To say that you went in and said, we're going to kick the crap, you know, we didn't feel that. We just felt we're going to start playing more their type of hockey. Obviously, there is a David versus Goliath thing. We're like, well, no, screw that. We're, we're Goliath too. In the summer of 1996, the world's best hockey players began to assemble at ice rinks around the globe. The tournament was big news internationally, but in the United States, not so much. It's above the fold in all the Canadian newspapers on the front page. But in the U.S., we had pennant races going on. The presidential election was coming up. It's August. NFL training camps are underway. It was buried if talked about at all. Step outside Canada, and this tournament is not raising the same sorts of passions among sports fans. For example, here in Seattle, at the biggest sports bar in the city, no one seems to care. I've never even heard of it until just right now. <laughs> Hockey is definitely Canada's sport, and the U.S., our interests kind of lie elsewhere. They would have to play it naked to get anybody's attention here. With or without the fanfare, Team USA remained determined and Lou Lamarillo knew exactly the kind of person he wanted to coach his team. I think the most important thing when you talk about an orchestra is the conductor. Uh, he has to turn his back to the audience and he has to stay focused on his team. And uh, Ron was exemplary. Lou wanted me to actually outline on a, on a whiteboard my speech the, the first night of the camp. And at the time, I was blank. I, I had no idea what, what I was going to say. I told Lou, I think the best speeches come from the heart. He told his players that year, it's all about driving the bus. Canada has always driven the bus. He did use the bus uh, quite a bit, as I remember. This is our chance to drive. We got a lot of good guys on this team, and hopefully we can do something to make a name for ourselves here. And Ron Wilson finished with a nod to the one U.S. squad that had beaten the odds. That was definitely a big factor in that 96 team was that 80, you know, Olympic team. I grew up in Philadelphia, and as young kids, I can remember prior to that tournament, we'd be up being Bobby Clark and Bernie Perrant in the driveway, and we'd run in and hear the news, and we'd go back being Jim Craig and uh, Mike Ruzioni because they had new heroes. It was the biggest thing that's ever happened in hockey. I can only know the effect it had on me. I mean, I wanted to be a hockey player after that. Ronnie Wilson, boy, he played that up to the hilt. Ron Wilson kept saying, it's not a miracle, we're, we're that good. Let's make our own history, let's, let's win this thing. We have a chance to do something we've talked about since we've been 10, 12 years old. And so, the inaugural World Cup of Hockey officially got underway in late August of 1996. It would consist of eight nations playing in a round-robin style tournament. The top four teams to emerge would advance to a single game elimination semifinal. The remaining two would battle for the championship in a best of three series. Canada had to be the favorite because you just look at who they had on their team. Team Canada would be tested immediately with an opening round game against their traditional rivals, the powerful Russian team. Back to the line, it's came and shot, stop, rebound, score! The Russians struck quickly. Kovalev gives Russia a one nothing lead. But Canada had seen this act before and knew exactly how to respond. Big hit in the corner, and a Russian player is down on the ice. Oh, I hear how great these guys are. Can't intimidate them, can't scare them. How about Messier? Messier got the elbow in Kasparaitis' face. Eric had the little rat, slapped him around a little. Lindros like a, like a big bear. Can't scare them. What is this, hockey night in Canada or hockey night in Russia? Shoot, 2-1 in favor of Canada. And Shanahan scores! Goliath had spoken. Game over. Canada wins it. Dispatching Russia 5-3. Oh, Canada's next opponent would be the U.S. And even though it was not an elimination game, the Americans were eager to send their own message. And what better place to do it than in the city of brotherly love. Do I hear USA, yes, USA chants? <laughs> he 
arena was going crazy. You know, it, it, you could feel the electricity in the air. Ronnie's message was, if you played with a guy on Team Canada, he would come and take your head off for Team Canada. Will you do the same for Team USA? I said to our team, we're going to take these guys down on the first shift of the game. How long do you think it'll be before the first hit? My broadcast partner, John Davidson, who was always alert to these things, got on the intercom. He told the boys down in the truck, stay wide, because we might need you. I knew my role, I knew what I had to do, and we could be friends after. Stevens and Garen started the thing. I expect you to come at me like you would anyone else, like your enemy. What's up? Here they go. That is and Lemieux. Canadians weren't going to be intimidated. They weren't going to be pushed around. That's the style of hockey that we play. Right hands are up. Down they go. We are 20 seconds in. I remember saying to my linesman, I lost control of this game already, and we were kind of laughing about it. Team USA, Team Canada, this is for you. Next thing you know, I'm ejected from the game. So that was the, probably the quickest game I've ever played. If you're going to beat Canada, you need these guys that are going to punch them in the mouth. Man, what an explosion here to start this first period. I think it was uh, an asset to us uh, for that to transpire. For two contentious periods, the teams traded blows and, the Lions the Lions the Lions the and goals. Walensky shoots it. Team USA, first blood. Messier coming in to drive it home. And that's when Canada knew that we were there to play. Then it happened. Faced with a relentless attack, Team Canada withered. All with it, got it back, and Suter shot score! For the first time in decades, Goliath actually looked beatable. Big blast, score! Four to two. All the years of high-profile tournaments with low-profile finishes by the U.S. against Canada. But tonight it changes. The outside world might go, oh, upset. Oh my God, Team USA beat Canada. Here comes Brad Powell. Score! Five to three, Team USA. In our dress room, there was no cheering or celebrating after the game. It was, that's way, that's what we're talking about. We're going to win. Team USA gets its first victory. They've defeated Team Canada. The 1996 World Cup of Hockey was barely underway, and we had already seen an upset. That was a very emotional loss for Team Canada last night. All their guys said how bad they played, and they weren't ready for a good young American team. Team Canada seemed disinterested. It was a tired team. They did not play certainly as well as they had hoped. In a way, it's, it's a sign of disrespect by saying, you just beat somebody, there must be there for something wrong with them. Canada could have made a better game of it. That was all brought to our attention by Ron. From day one, that was it. No respect. Canada gives you no respect. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's the gamesmanship within the game. Everybody measures themselves against us, which means they are going to try and play a psychological game and so are we. Everyone looked at it and said, Yo, yeah, you're right. So let's go get our respect ourselves. Which is exactly what they did. All around behind. Oh, pass it, pass it. And it's five to one. The U.S. breezed through the rest of the preliminary round, including beating Russia with surprising ease. With a 3 0 record, the Americans advanced to the semifinals. Canada's road was a bit tougher, but as expected, they too advanced to the semis. There is a lot of easier breathing. Is there ever? Rounding out the group with a talented Swedish team 
and the always dangerous Russians. And guess who the United States had to face next? Why is it almost every single tournament USA has to play Russia to get to the final? Russia. Although the U.S. had beaten them earlier in the tournament, the Russian team was loaded with NHL stars, and advancing was no sure thing. You look at the Russian team, like, they had their fair share of Hall of Famers, too. Fedorovs and the Kovalovs and the Larianovs, they're just so talented, and it's scary. Everyone was, uh, well, this could be the end of the road for the U.S. Adding to the drama was where the game would be held. They would play in front of a hostile Canadian crowd in the capital city of Ottawa. Curious reaction from the fans here at the Carmel Center. It seems like a partisan Russian crowd. We've already beaten Canada, and, you know, an enemy of your enemy is your friend. You get the feeling here there's some Russian fans in the building. Some American resentment. I think the longer they booed, the more it helped. guy who really got booed the the biggest was Brett Hall. And Hall hearing the booze here at the Corral Center. I think it was probably midway through the second period. I'm like, why are they booing you so bad? And he's just like, what are you new? He goes, I'm Canadian. They want me to play for their team. Brett Hall was born in a nice town in Canada, Belleville, Ontario. He was eligible to play for both Canada and the United States, and his native soil did not pick him for the team. And that registered. That was in 1986. Team USA jumped at the chance to add Hull to their roster. 10 years later, Hull's choice of team was clear. Team USA gave me an opportunity that I'll never forget, so I'm not gonna be disloyal to them. And so I said, I am committed to Team USA no matter what. Every time I got the puck, they'd boo me. Red Hull on right wing, and he's hearing the boos. And I look at Doug Waite, and I'm like, has it gotten to this? The Russians are more popular than us? And we just said, let's just give it to him. That's Doug Waite playing it back. Hatcher shot deflected right on the score. Red Hull on the rebound. He just couldn't wait to just stick it to him. Hull shoots, he scores! We beat him 5-2 and, you know, first star waving at the crowd, leaving the ice. And Team USA wins it. And then we knew we were going to the finals. To It's almost like they didn't want us to play Canada because they knew we could beat them. Meanwhile, the other side of the bracket would have its own memorable semifinals. The Canada-Sweden game was one of the finest that you could imagine for drama. The game headed into overtime, tied at two. We had an unbelievable game against Sweden. Sundin, Sundin runs by foot, got it across the side. Save made by Joseph as he hit the ice. I was pulling for Canada in order for us to grab the wheel of the bus. The other passengers had to be Canada. Neil Hansen here, Sundin moving in, a shot is saved by Joseph. But I wasn't sure that they were going to pull it off. I actually thought they were going to lose. They hit a couple goal posts in, in overtime. Alfred's it up with it into the slot. A shot hit the post. Oh, man. My job is to, you know, to score goals and score goals in big moments, right? Paul Coffey picked up the puck from behind the net and skied up the ice, and I just sort of followed behind him as support in case he, he lost the puck, and he did lose the puck. We lost that game it would have been obviously crushing for the country and for us all. 
When you look back at the tournament, I guess if at the start you're in North America, you say, wouldn't it be nice to have a USA-Canada final? And that's what we've got. Not only is this the biggest thing in Canada, it has now started to take on at least a few legs in some communities in the United States. USA! USA! We had some hockey going on, and it was our nation against the one to the north. And even people that don't follow hockey all the time know that there is a favorite and an underdog here. And oftentimes you can get more passionate about something if you can establish that. Mike, I couldn't be happier with the fact that it's an all-North American final. I think these are the two best teams going into the tournament. They've survived to meet in the final. I remember being told, uh, if you don't want to play Canada, then you shouldn't be playing in the finals. They really wanted to make a statement and prove something, that they could beat the favorite, the best team in the world at the time, the best team that could be assembled was Canada. When Canada gets into this situation, they look to their leaders. This will be a great, great battle. Doesn't matter who we play, you know. We set the mark, we set the bar, and everybody has to come and, and knock us off the podium. Ron Wilson, head coach of Team USA, uh, your team the only one undefeated going into the final, yet some observers say it's not so much your team but the flaws in the other teams that you faced. How do you react to that? Well, we can't worry about what the other teams are saying. We're focused in our own room and we're going to continue to play to our strengths and do what we've been doing best. I'm predicting Canada in three. The international media still had its doubts about Team USA. After all, Team Canada had 10 future Hall of Famers. But the Americans had one advantage. Game one of the best of three finals would be played in Philadelphia. This should be ours. It's in our backyard. It's in Philly. This should be our game in game one, and that's definitely not the way it turned out. Gretzky circling back. The shot. They came out and they played like Canada, and we played like the old USA. moving in, he has the view and he runs, score! Team Canada carried the play throughout the game. Only the performance of goaltender Mike Richter kept Team USA close. And here's Eiserman alone, save made by Richter! Oh my! Behind Richter's remarkable goaltending, the United States was only down 3-2, with less than 10 seconds to play. Fans standing and applauding Team USA. They need a goal to tie this thing up. We had put ourselves in a bad spot by not playing well, but we had the chance there at the end. Now it comes down to a big face-off to the right side of Curtis Joseph. You know, my job was just to get it by the first guy and see what happens. How much experience you have, how long you've been around, uh, how many games you've played, uh, to, to get scored on uh, when you're there's seconds away from, from winning a game is always tough to recover. And you think that you know, who's gonna get it? Yeah. You're American and you're a hockey fan, so you're steeped in 80, and you think that you know, who's gonna get it? Yeah. You're American and you're a hockey fan, so you're steeped in 80, and you think that you know, things have supernatural, magical importance to them. Overtime, you're able to win. First game to score, win. We're meant to win this. Yeah. Like the U.S. Is, is meant to win this. Dives it around to Adam Foot. Foot able to play it to Lemieux. But Philadelphia was not Lake Placid. Little tap ahead by Flurry is on now for Iserman. Steve Iserman. I remember uh, Ron Wilson uh, saying, you know, that's one Mike wanted to have back. <laughs> if I'm being honest, 
I didn't really give us a, a, a big chance to win at that point. Well, it seemed most of the country jumped for joy last night as Team Canada beat the United States in the first game of the World Cup final. It's been said Canada's national pride is at stake in this tournament. I think it means a lot with the rivalry between U.S. and Canada for Canada to beat the U.S. team in a final like this. Canada was just a win away from the title. And with the series shifting to Montreal for the remainder of the tournament, Team USA's chances looked bleak. Radio chance number 15, Brent Hall. Now we have to go and win not one, but two games up in Montreal. You can feel the uh, importance of that game in the air. Now, Team Canada. The crowd, the, the atmosphere was awesome. There's Canadian flags, everybody's dressed in red. A lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of nerves. There is an air of expectancy that Team Canada will win here tonight. You know, I remember getting a phone call from my dad, and my dad's like, hey, I'm in a hotel. Canada's setting up the party for their uh, World Cup win. So you better do all you can, son, to get, get out there and, and make sure they, you spoil that party tonight. With difficult situations like this, it was just kind of like, all right, f it. We're going up there. We're going to do it up there right in front of their own fans. Fed back to the point. Suter shoots one. And it's in and score! John LeClaire has gotten the first goal of the game. Got to win hockey. This has got to be reckless abandon. And Jelios pulls Lindros down. Physical. You have to have emotion to play this game. Tenacious, and we're just going to keep coming. Doug Wayne, he went right into Desjardins, took him out nicely, and then punched him in the mouth. The United States jumped to a 3-1 lead. But the real story of the night was the excellence of the American goaltender. Mike Richter was incredible. Glorious shot, and it's struck away by Richter. Another shot, and that didn't find its way. And another shot, and Richter blocked that one off. Richter, I mean, he was like a brick wall back there. Another brilliant shift by Canada, but they can't beat Richter. He was the best player uh, for our team, and when your goalie's the best player, good things are going to happen. Ron Wilson has said, until we beat Canada, in a meaningful game, we can't say that we have respect. They have beaten them in a meaningful game. Even more respect can be grabbed on Saturday. Silence. Silence. You can hear a pin drop. Canadian fans thought the Philly game restored order. There was a lot of what just happened. Did, did, this, did we possibly lose this game 5-2 to two to, to the United States? This is what hockey's all about. I mean... Each team has one hand on the World Cup, and it's going to be a, a slugfest to see who gets the other hand on them. This is what we dreamed of when we first heard there'd be a World Cup of hockey, that it would go to a third game in the U.S. against Canada. The expected team had played well and won the first game. The other guys had won the second game. And so now it becomes paramount to Canadian honor to win the third game. You're expected to win? second place is not necessarily tolerated it's really the one thing we have over the the americans and we'd like to hold on to that we'd like to bring down the american ego that they're the best and actually they're not we stayed at the hotel which is like a block from the rink so we're walking through with security like thousands of people it's chaos these people are painted, they got the Canadian flags going, you know, people are yelling at us. I'm not sure um, whoever says that Canadians are really polite ever went to uh, <laughs> a World Cup game. It was just mayhem. It was literally screaming at us. and It was like you were rock stars going into a place, but they didn't want to hear you. <laughs> this will likely be the largest crowd tonight to ever watch an international hockey game. Every kid who plays hockey in Canada dreams of that moment to be standing on the blue line wearing a Team Canada jersey, listening to what's going on. That's why, you know, I put in those 10,000 hours of practice. I was preparing for this moment to be a part of something incredible. You had Canada in Canada with the possibility of losing to Team USA. 
and Team USA going, we have a chance to beat Canada and knock the king off the crown. From the drop of the puck, the pace of play was fast and furious. The game was scoreless midway through the first period. Wait, gave it to Leach. Leach across. Big drive by Hunting Stars! Red Hall! one nothing, a power play goal! You know, if you score the first goal, that's really making a statement when you're on the road. The United States finished the first period with a one nothing lead. In the second, things got more physical. They're fighting for every inch, both teams. It's fast, it's scintillating, it's vicious. My sons now who are 16 and 18. They watch the game with me. They asked me if there were any rules. Were there any rules at all? Are these teams finishing their checks? Oh, oh boy. They are really finishing their checks. This was the toughest game I had to referee in my professional career. Gary Gregson getting busy. It wasn't just an aggressive forecheck. It was aggressive everywhere. It was banging and hitting. I like to say there was a lot of hate in that game. It's a game of battles. And it's the battles that you win, both mentally and physically, uh, that uh, allow you to have success. There's the stick up high from Lindros, and it'll come down right there in the back of the head. A two-minute penalty is what Terry Gregson handed out. Probably a bad call. Probably a bad call. It was vicious. After every face-off, there was something going on. It was serious stick work. Tensions continued to rise throughout the second period. The nastiest moment came from the stick of Keith Kachuk. Look at Kachuk. Oh, my goodness. Now here, Terry Gregson is being talked to by both linesmen. This could be a big decision. You have to take a position that you can defend. You can't just say, well, we thought. You know, that's why we conferred, because, you know, that's a huge, uh, a huge call. Five minutes to Kachuk. Well, it's for the stick work, and that also carries a game misconduct. He wanted to win, I wanted to win, and uh, probably stepped over the line, but what are you going to do? It was a little bit of a, a warning shot by the refs. Um, I don't think anybody necessarily saw it coming, but uh, understood where they're coming from. Tough guy to lose, though, at that point. Tough guy to lose. As second period play resumed, the U.S. turned to their goaltender and Game 2 hero, Mike Richter, to preserve their 1-0 lead. Claude Lemieux got it back to Graves, and a save made by Richter. We were sitting right behind Richter's cage, and how many times we watched Canadian players put their hands up. Lindros did it a couple of times. Sure, the puck was in the net, and it wasn't. Wayne Gretzky sent it in for Lindros. Oh, remarkable save again by Richter. He's, he's unbelievable. Mike Richter was unbelievable. The one vivid memory I do have is of Mike Richter's save on, on Vinny Danfoos. Oh, he's back out. He came down on a pretty clean breakaway, and he kind of deked me out of my jock a little bit. I, I went too hard on, on his second to last deke, and then he went to stuff it in. I was able to get my stick back there. These are games that make legends out of hockey players, and Richter is becoming a legend already. I could feel kind of the stadium going, oh, there it is, and then it, then it wasn't. And that was, uh, that was a good feeling because, you know, that, that can frustrate a team, and it can frustrate even an arena. At some point, you're wondering, you know, will you ever get another one by this guy? In that second period, Richter stopped an astonishing 21 shots. And with just seconds to go, the United States led 1-0. Everybody just kept pushing and kept believing and focused our entire energy, you know, trying to, to tie it up. Lindros tucked the pass across Gretzky there. Eight to go in the period. Coffee fires, knocked down. Turn around, Gretzky. I was so disappointed and I knew I saw him coming and I thought I should have had that goal. I was just don't like giving up that goal going into the locker room. We're tied up at one and with 5.5 seconds to go in the second period, Lindros put the puck on the ice underneath the right arm of Mike Richter. A power play goal. That was tough. Uh, five seconds left and you, and you go into that room and you have all that work you just put into it and you're back to square one. If you give up those goals late in the periods and close games, those teams usually lose.
are back at the Bolson Center in Montreal. Someone said you're going, you know, one one game in the final period against Canada for the World Championship. You take that every day. This crowd enjoying another great hockey game. The United States dominated early in the third. Denmark trying to set it is here. But failed to convert. Midway through the period, the game was still tied at one. I remember how exciting it was, you know that. Holy cow, third period, we had a good feeling. You know, we're all elite players. We all love the opportunity to be a part of history. Hall shanked it off the board, but it's put for the shot. He scores! Canada leads for the first time in a hockey game. You gotta be kidding me. After all, we've kind of weathered. I know Richter has yet to see it, and he heard that awful sound behind him when the puck hit the drive. Like it's happened so many times in history for Canada. You know, we need a big goal, and Canada's always seemed to have been able to get it. And sure enough, we got it again. A huge goal with 7 10 to go. When he scores that goal, you would have thought the bench would have just went, and it almost went the other way. Every guy perked up. The coaches, the players, everyone went, like, oh, now we got to go. But time was running out for the U.S. With less than four minutes to go, they trailed two to one. It looked like Goliath would win again. The expectations of a nation on Canada. Then came this. Help came from Lemieux. He fired, waiting for his lead. Shoots one to Blake and score! Ryan shoots it, and I just, I get a piece of it. Cujo's looking up for the puck, and it goes, bounces through his legs. And all of a sudden, we have a tie game. But the Americans couldn't celebrate just yet. Well, the Canadians are complaining it was a high stick. Gregson is going to call upstairs to the video goal judge and see if the stick was over the crossbar. Oh, baby, that is close. It was awfully close, wasn't it? It could be, it might not be, it isn't. They are continuing to view it. We had some concern on the bench. And Holly's like, there's no way they're counting this. Well, yeah, because we were in Canada. I said, for sure, we're, they're going to screw us. And Brexit says, the goal, yes. And they didn't. I was like, holy mackerel. Things have changed. And the score is tied at two. It's like overtime right now. 3.18 to go. Ron Wilson addressed Tony Amante the morning of the third game. Ron said something to the effect, you know, you've got the winner tonight. And jokingly, Amante responded, can I be Mike Arruzzioni? And Wilson said, sure, you're ugly, you're Italian, and you went to Boston University just like he did. 2.40 to go. Game tied at two. Hatcher with it. Shoots one. Save. Rebound. Score! Amante has broken the tie! But once again, there was an objection. Curtis Joseph came out and pleaded to Gregson that it was kicked. Like Tony, you kick it. Oh, no, hell no, I didn't kick it. It hit me. When they went for the review, it was definitely fighting, you know, saying, you know, that was all stick. That was all stick. Terry Gregson was in the left corner. He was looking right at the play, and he was emphatic that it was a goal. Now it's being questioned. Over we go again. That's a legitimate goal. That goes in. That's a good goal. I point goal. Team USA is ahead, three to two, with 2:35 to go in the third. Tony Amante gets credit for it. Two goals by Team USA. Both of them reviewed, both of them found to count. Hey, there's still time on the clock. There's still opportunity for us to tie the game up. With less than a minute to go and a face-off in their offensive zone, Team Canada pulled their goalie. Messier's on the draw and his back end. Obviously, at the time, he was one of the best face-off men uh, in the world. He wins the draw back to the point, and Gretzky kind of slips to the back door. I see him standing there. I'm like, this guy's the greatest scorer ever. He's wide open. 
When your team is down a goal, who do you want to have the puck? Wayne Gretzky. Right. Back to Coffey. Take a shot in there, right in. Gretzky was open. And what a stick and bounce away from him. Take off Gretzky's stick. Oh, man. Wayne Gretzky had a chance. The puck glanced right off the blade of his stick, through his legs, and wide. You know, the greatest player that ever lived. You know, when he misses from there, you know, someone's on your side. Now a backhander by Dom Bruce sailed all the way back down the aisle. I've never felt like that. It was an amazing feeling. And then Daddy kind of ended it with a just a real special goal. Adam Denmark has drilled one into the net, and Team USA has a 5-2 lead. All these goals had gone in. It was like four goals in, in three and a half minutes. So we could actually enjoy the last 10 or 15 seconds of the clock counting down. I had no idea what to do. I looked at Chris Chelios and I said, I go, what do, what do I do? I never, never won. Right? And he goes, well, drop your stick and gloves and come give me a hug. <laughs> this is no miracle. It is a reward for building excellence. It felt great. You know, we were, felt so proud. Putting on your, your country's jersey is always, a, it is really a special thing. We did it. We did what we set out to do. We held our ground against Canada, and we did it in Canada. They played better. They scored more goals. We lost. It's, what are you going to do? Unfortunately, in Canada, we don't ever play for second place. And uh, when you lose, it's devastating. Canada's hockey fans could use a national therapy session. There are millions of depressed Canadians out there as the United States beat Team Canada to win the first World Cup of hockey. It was like morning. People wouldn't speak, they wouldn't even look, and they knew who we were. It was like, oh my God, it was like the Montreal had turned into zombies. The best team usually wins. We played uh, Canada, we played a great game. Unfortunately, USA played a better game. I remember being a, a kind of a smart aleck myself and saying that Canada's flying their, their flags at half mast. I think the Americans winning, and I hate to say this uh, because, you know, the rivalry, but, you know, them winning was great for hockey. This is a gigantic boost for hockey in the United States. Just as many of the players on the 96 team were inspired by the events at Lake Placid, so too, in some ways, a younger generation of Americans were inspired by this team. For USA Hockey and for little kids playing the game, who are now professionals now, it was enormous. I remember watching the game, I mean, I was, I was 12 at the time, but I remember Americans like us, we grew up idolizing and wanting to be. This is the best American election in history. It let us from coast to coast congratulate the American team. It was David and Goliath. We came right into the Lions' den and beat Canada in its home game. I'll tell you, this is a great, great feeling. And it was guys who believed and collected themselves in August in Providence. And in 30 days' time, went to the top of the mountain.